Hello and welcome to a special playoff edition of the Blackpool FC preview show. I'm Jed Mills and here's what's coming up today. We'll look ahead to Blackpool's semi-final fixtures against Oxford United. Former pool midfielder Keith Southern shares his thoughts on what to expect from the two-legged ties, plus the impact of Everton loanee Ellis Sims. We'll hear from Neil Critchley and Kenny Dougal ahead of Tuesday's trip to the Kassam Stadium, plus director Brett Geraghty shares his memories of supporting the Seasiders for more than 40 years. Well, joining me in the studio to discuss all of that and more is former Blackpool striker Andy Priest. Well, Andy, first of all, a great achievement. We know last week that they were already in the playoffs, but to finish the top of the pile is a super achievement. Yeah, and I think that's important when you go into the playoffs, uh, getting that home advantage in the second leg so important. Um, and, you know, finishing with uh, another clean sheet, another win. Uh, confidence is really high. And that was a tough game really wasn't it against a relegated side, we talked about this last week, who were you know, plenty to play for maybe contracts wise, some players as you say all you know got flip flops on already on the beach and stuff and they'll obviously have to rebuild for next season but you never knew what they were going to come into the game like and for Blackpool it was all about keeping that momentum going. Yeah and it, it was difficult as well, you, want, you could see that Critch wanted to give some players opportunities and you worry sometimes that might be a bit disjointed or you might just lose it, lose a game and lose that momentum. But, um, you know, the lads came in, you, you can see how hungry they were, you know, what an opportunity to play in, in the playoffs. So, you know, they all wanted to take that. Um, and, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a decent performance. And uh, again, you know, we're, we're going in with full of confidence. And they've got a bit of a rest. And, and, and how important is that? Because it has been just relentless hasn't it for Blackpool the amount of games they've had to sort of catch up on with you know games called off and stuff like that to have that break to get players back to maybe just rest those limbs a little bit how crucial will that be there'll definitely be some lads who've been feeling it you know and, and this rest will, will recharge the batteries a little bit and get get them going and that you know they probably need this to to you know to be at their peak other players will, will be thinking you know I just want the games mm. to come I just want the moment I don't want to you know sometimes you don't want to think about what's coming ahead you just want it to come one after another I've had a few days to think about the playoffs and what it means and what it means to the club and the promotion and all the excitement and that and so the adrenaline is going to be really rushing around the players so uh, you know it can work both ways but I think it's give Critch a lot of time now to work with the players, come up with a system, how he wants to play against Oxford. He knows who he's up against, so that's important. How tough is it going to be these two games? I mean, we played a 0-0 draw and a 2-0 win, so that's four points from the potential six. Can you take anything from these games going into playoff football? Um, you, you can. <laughs> Look, it, you're, going to, you're going to have that confidence. You haven't conceded a goal, which, which, which is important. So. They've got to find a way of, of breaking breaking Blackpool down. Um, on these playoffs, it can be down to just a mistake. It can be down to uh, a refereeing decision. Um, if things go as they are, you know, I think in, in how the games have gone, that you know that you know we we you know our favourites to go through. But it's going to be difficult. Oxford are a good side. They're in uh, in great runner form, um, and they'll feel. They feel like they they put it out there that they've got nothing to lose, and you know try and put all the pressure on, on Blackpool. You know it's just a tactic that will be used. So, um, you know, I, I think you can take a little bit out of it. I think you know when you watch these playoff games, they normally go very similar. But like you say, you know, a decision one way or the other can ch change everything. It, it's so tough. that's why we like playoff football, really, isn't it? It's so tough. Anything can happen, as you say. Some players relish pressure some players you know it, it really gets them I suppose I think one really good thing to see at the weekend and talk about experience Gary Medine coming back off the subs bench that'd be a big boost yeah he could could be key you know whether he starts or not you know you know I don't know but coming off the bench you know in, in circumstances where you may, may be trying to hold on to something his experience getting free kicks holding the ball up um, killing games off or coming on late on to you know if you need a goal so someone like him you know could be key whether it you know whether it's off the bench and Keshi Anderson and Kevin Stewart as well um, you know keeping that sort of momentum going is again back from injuries that break and this break this will do them sort of plays good yeah 
Look, again, it's all positives. Uh, the problem with Critch is now picking a team. <laughs> you know, he's probably now got so many options, you know, picking a system. So he's going to have that all, all going through his head. Every player is going to be thinking, you know, I've got a chance. I've put myself at, uh, uh, in, in with a chance of playing. Um, so that's probably going to be the most difficult thing that, that he's got. But what a good position to be in. To have say, fair to say, as a, as a coach, as you are, it's a good headache. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, you, you want those headaches. You know, it's going to be tough and, and he's going to have to have those difficult conversations with players but the way the players have been all season it's been a real tight team uh, uh, ethic and, and they've worked together so hard and they seem to take being on the bench okay and then they're back in the team so I don't think he's got any problems with that I think again it's all positive well, someone who knows all about the ups and downs of the playoffs is Keith Southern, now a coach with Everton under 18. Southern was part of two promotion winning squads with Blackpool in 2007 and 2010 and took time out this week to reflect on these types of encounters. It's just a brilliant occasion. I think uh, whoever invented the playoff system um, came up with a, an outstanding idea because it obviously keeps the season alive for so many teams. and. If you manage to get into that four, that group of four, that pack jostling for promotion, you always believe that you've got that opportunity and you're the team and you've got the staff and the players around you that can take that step, certainly get to Wembley and then hopefully go the extra mile and get promoted. So it, it's really, really exciting. Um, and it's something that I, I, I cherished a lot, you know, in 2007 and in 2010 and also... The, the year after when we were beaten by um, or two years after sorry when we were beaten by West Ham so I've experienced the highs and lows but it, it, it's certainly um, a, a special occasion in the season What would you say is key in the in the approach and the way you treat these games? <clears throat> well um, the momentum that you have going into them I think is, is really really important and Blackpool obviously have that momentum I was looking earlier at um, the, the, the previous fixtures, you know, Blackpool have had and the running, um, the, the run of form that they've been on since Christmas. I think I'm right in saying they've only lost three in 25 games, which is phenomenal. Um, winning the last four, all without conceding a goal. So I think that momentum is, is very, very important. I think Oxford will carry it also because they sneaked in on the last day of the season um, and they've won six out of the last seven, I believe. So um, I think momentum is key. Um, at this time, both teams seem to have have that momentum, that belief and that energy building. Um, and it'll just be around who can execute their, their, their game plan, their identity and how they want to go about things on the day to the best of their ability. And that will decide who goes through, I would have thought. Fair to say that the most special memories will be the, the 2010 ones for you and, and those probably two legs against Nottingham Forest leading up to Wembley. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the build-up to that was was brilliant. I think um, it's well documented the, the home record Nottingham Forest had that season. I think it was outstanding. They obviously finished above us in the table that year. Um, but we had no fear. We had real belief in what we were doing and you know, I see similarities from afar. Obviously, I'm, I'm not in and around the Blackpool camp, but from afar, I see that belief and that momentum because of the run that the club's been on, you know, certainly since Christmas. It's been so surreal in football and the world these last 12 to 18 months and, and no fans in stadiums. The government said this week that, you know, 4,000 Blackpool fans could be back inside the stadium for that game. That second leg, you know that the atmosphere at Bloomfield Road, and even with the reduced capacity, that the impact that the supporters could have. Blackpool fans, in my, in my opinion, I'm biased. Are, are the best in the country. I think there's no better uh, feeling anywhere up and down the football league for sure than than Blackpool fans coming into that ground in a playoff scenario. So if they can get four thousand in. That'll probably feel like 8,000, 10,000 to the players because the noise, the colour, the atmosphere, everything that they, they bring to the occasion. So I know Oxford fans will probably say otherwise, but I definitely think if fans come into the stadium, it, it can't be a hindrance to Blackpool. You know, after I've experienced those occasions and um, they really are wonderful occasions and um, that 4,000 will, will, will roll the team on, I'm sure. 
you've always had a, a big vested interest in Blackpool and, and following the fortunes ever since you left the club. But there's even added incentive now, isn't there, with, with Ellis Sims being part of the setup on loan from Everton and, and you being part of that coaching setup at Everton? Yeah, uh, I worked with Ellis for, for, for the best part of two years. Um, obviously, we did an interview when he when when he signed on loan and you know it's it's been um it's really been pleasing and I've been quite proud you know I think the coaching staff I speak on their behalf at Everton also that he's gone and he's adjusted to men's football really really quickly he hasn't played every minute of every game which is is great and, and, and in a way that he's had to adjust to not being the main striker He's had to adapt. Um, he's come out of his comfort zone into a different environment, uh, playing for points, uh, seasoned professionals, um, you know, um, learning off them, the demands of the men's game. So I think it's been a brilliant experience for him. And, you know, he scored eight goals along the way and potentially he could end up with a, a, a promotion from League One, which would be outstanding on his CV. So, yeah, I'm delighted for him and, you know, it's kind of panned out uh, the way I, I, I'd have hoped, certainly. But I also had a hint of expectation as well because obviously Neil Critchley's got a development background. Um, he wants to play football the right way. So I think it's been a great fit for, for everybody involved. Landy, well, let's talk first of all about Keith Southern. I mean, you know, those two playoffs will, will go down in, especially the 2010 one in, in Blackpool's history forever and a lot of people will always say he was kind of that engine room that that player that you know this is sort of the underdog that let others go and and just sort of be free and and do all the fancy stuff and a great player a great servant yeah he was he was a unsung hero wasn't he you know i think he's one that that the players really appreciate you know pr probably more more than the fans you know it's always a goal scorer or the creator or that you know but he was such a key figure in in those sides and uh, but he, you know he could play as well and, and great box to box great energy yeah good good lad as well um let's talk about playoff football because is there a different mentality and you've you've had your fair share there's no doubt about it is there a different mentality going into playoff football than into you know just your, your general league sort of games every weekend well, because there's two ties, it you know it's not never going to be over after the first one. Um, so th there is a little bit, a little bit of that because you know when you get to the end of the game and it's it's nil nil, that might be you know might be okay. Um, but I think as a player, you probably just treat it as a, as a one off. You know, every get each game is a one off, and then you look where you are, and then you assess it into the second one, and then you probably can uh, change things around a little bit. Um, but it's it's so tight. These games are normally really tight. Um, no team really runs runs away with it, so you know you just got you just got to be focused and, and and make sure you don't make any mistakes. You just don't want to be that one who makes a mistake or misses a chance. Um, and uh, they're normally they're normally either exciting affairs where you know the three four threes and, and that, or they're really dull and it, it's a nil nil and you know someone just sneaks on penalties or, or maybe gets a, a last minute winner. And we we don't want to look too much ahead with these games because I say we, we don't know how they're going to be we, we've been talking haven't we before that we're filming this saying it's going to be hopefully two really good teams play really good football but like you say you just don't know how it's going to be no because they do play both play good football but will they cancel each other out so it, it could be where there's not many chances created equally because they play some nice <laughs> football they might open each other up because they're you know they're a little bit stretched and there might be chance after chance after chance so uh, it's difficult to say, and then the nerves come into it. You know, players that you know, like some players are going to be really nervous, and, and, and the occasion may be too big for them. Others are going to, you know, rise to the occasion. So, there's a lot of things that can happen within within those uh, games. And I suppose as well that the other argument is: Do you like playing your home game first or your home game last? Blackpool, you know, essentially have got the good draw because they finished third in the league, so they play their their home time uh, home time at the second leg. Does that matter again? Do you look into things like that as a player? I think it's nice to come home and have this. Now we've got fans in. I think that's going to make a, a big difference. Um, and you can imagine how loud that's going to be now because you know they haven't had that opportunity to so to be able to come back to a playoff game. It's going to be massive. <laughs> so at, at home, you know, and needing that lift 
um, if, if that's the case after the first leg, it's going to be it's going to be a huge advantage. It's going to be massive, m more so in the second leg than the, than than the first one. You think so? Uh, they, they they can really play the part. Well, ahead of the first leg against Oxford, Neil Critchley has been sharing his thoughts. These games are full of emotion, full of drama. Um, the psych psychological aspects of these games are different than your normal league games. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, I think we're ready, we're excited, and we're looking forward to what should be a couple of um, fantastic games. Both teams go into it with good momentum, but can you take anything from the, the previous meetings this season, or do they just go out of the window here? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Um, I think what we do know and what Oxford will know is there's two good teams. Um, you know, Carl's obviously got a very good set of players at Oxford. Um, they've got the experience of being, being in the playoffs from last season. Um, and, you know, unfortunately for them falling uh, the final hurdle at Wembley, but they'll be looking to go one better. And they, they say as they've come in into the playoffs in great form. Um, and they'll obviously be looking to carry that momentum on and they're at home in the first leg so they'll probably see that as an opportunity to get off to a good start and, um, but, but we're in good form as well so I think there's two sets of players who know each other well um, coaching staff as well and there's a lot of respect for each other um, and yeah I think say the old adage of maybe made the best team win but I'm really looking forward to seeing um, two groups of good players going head to head in what should be two really exciting uh, encounters. In terms of the time that has passed between the last league game and this playoff game, are you able to welcome anybody back to the squad? Yeah, we're hopeful. Yeah, we are. Um, obviously, Sully's not been involved for the last uh, few games, so we're hopeful that he will be able to take part um, in one if not both of the games Ethan Robson were hopeful as well Grant Ward were hopeful as well um, obviously we welcomed Gary Medine back which was a big lift uh, in the last day of the season um, he's been training so w w fingers crossed we'll get a couple of important members of the squad back ready um, I would think that they would be the only ones but we've not suffered um, any injury since our last game in training so far uh, we've got a couple of training sessions to go um, and yeah the players will be desperate to be fit and be involved so um, that's only natural that was head coach Neil Critchley there head of the first leg against Oxford we touched on the fans before 4,000 going to be at Oxford and 4,000 will be here it's going to be a bit strange really to sort of see them isn't it here in the colours but again not loads of fans but they'll certainly be loud yeah they'll still make the make the noise and, and make the atmosphere um you know they'll make themselves heard they'll want to be uh, want to make themselves heard as well and i think the players i love that you know i think it's so hard to play you know when you play sometimes you play pre-season friendlies when there's no crowd it you know it is a bit eerie and i suppose the players will have got used to it by now but having those those uh, fans behind you um i think it can only lift you as you say, Blackpool this season against some of those teams near the bottom, um, sometimes they've had indifferent results. But when you look at the top teams, when they've played those top teams, they've had the better results. Again, does that stand them in good stead going into these two legs? Yeah, and I think probably when you're pushed a little bit harder, the play, you know, the players rise to that. You know, when you're playing against teams who are maybe struggling a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you don't get the best, you're not pushed to, to, to your maximum. You know, Oxford are going to push every player to their maximum and, and I think our lads can respond to that. And Oxford as well, I mean, what a final last game of the season for them. They really, let's be honest, weren't thinking they were going to get into this position. That'll be a huge threat against Blackpool. Blackpool have done that before themselves. Yeah, you know, sneaking in, you, you see these teams sneak in at the last minute and, and and go on and, and get through. So, you know, they're, they're a dangerous team. Um, but, you know, going back a few years, you know, Oxford were the team that stopped stopped Blackpool getting promoted when I was when I was playing here that, well, from a magnificent run. So, you know, we owe them one. Well, one man who was on target in Blackpool's last visit to the Cassan Stadium is midfielder Kenny Dougal. After making 37 appearances this season, he's relishing being a part of Blackpool's playoff campaign. Yeah, obviously very exciting. Um, 
it's a first sort of promotion player for myself and a lot of the boys so it'll be uh, exciting times ahead and you know we finished the season strong and, and really looking forward to it. You had a promotion on your CV from this division before but how much are you determined to play a part in that business and that you missed out on with Barnsley? Yeah obviously it was disappointing getting injured at the end for Barnsley but um, you know to play a major role in, in this team has, has been fantastic and you know we've we've had ups and downs and obviously looking at the table throughout the season with all the catch-up games we had at times we're thinking we're nowhere near it but we always knew ourselves that um you know we were good enough to to go all the way and obviously we've proved that finishing third that we are good enough um but yeah we need to finish it off otherwise it's a it's a well done but a disappointing finish one of the most important things is always to carry over momentum with four games in a row winning and with clean sheets as certainly is that yeah, exactly. Like you said, you know, we had a little blip, back-to-back uh, -back losses, and then sort of regrouped and um, won four on the balance, four clean sheets, and that makes it 22 for the season, um, which is a great achievement for us. And you know, with the amount of injuries and changes that we've had throughout the season, it's um, it's a great accomplishment. Um, so hopefully, we can carry on that that defence into the into the final few games. It's the away leg first, and the last trip to Oxford was a happy one for you. It was your first and only goal for Blackpool? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's always it's always good uh, when you score goals and obviously won that game two 0 and, and played very well. So um, all the boys looking for a repeat of that performance and you know if we can we can take a lead back to Bloomfield Road we'll we'll be happy. Is it all about the fine margins you think in these two games? Yeah, obviously all the teams in in the four are, are quite similar. Sort of can all beat each other. You know we've we've proven that we could beat um, anyone in this division. So um, obviously we're confident ourselves and all the other teams will be confident as well. Well, Andy, let's talk about Kenny Dougal. For me, it has been a, a really, really influential player since uh, being in the squad as well. And, and coming in in that sort of October time against Burns, that seemed to be sort of when it all changed for Blackpool. Yeah, he's just that important player in the side who, who just picks things up, does things really simple, uh, breaks attacks up. And someone you probably don't notice that much, but he's so effective in what he does. And uh, I think he's probably a key cog in, in everything that, that the team does. You think similar to, we heard from Keith Southern before, that kind of similar player that just goes unnoticed, but certainly his team members will know exactly who he is. Yeah, look, he's he, a different player to Keith, but you know, he keeps things really simple. Um, let's, you know, let's probably the others go, go and play. Um, but he's, he's very, very clever. You have to be intelligent to be in the right position all the time, you know, to break things up and know where, where teams are going to come come from and uh, you know he seems to just have that knack to, to be in the right position at the, at the right time and he always looks like he's got so much time on the ball as well you know and, and again that's a, that's an art to know to look like you know he's got all the time in the world here but you know but that is his skill in itself yeah and, and going back to that sort of October time if we sort of remember now it wasn't a great start was it for Blackpool there's lots of players lots of change in that summer obviously all gelling together but it was that October I say Kenny came in and Jerry Yates seemed was getting on the score sheet at that time as well. Yeah, and it's all about time and think you know things going right at the right time. Look, it's very hard when you've got a new squad uh, to get them firing straight away. Um, you know they've got to start to get little understandings and and a bit of confidence as well. You know confidence within within each other within. Uh, the teammates within how you're playing and the structure you're playing in, um, the managers trying to learn about individuals. So it, you know, it will take to time, but you know from that moment really, you know everything's clicked into gear. Yeah, and it'd be a crucial cog, wasn't it? It won't be in these sort of playoffs, and you know further on, who, who knows? Yeah, you know he's got the he's got the ability to play higher, um, and he'll give us that calm and influence. You know when probably everything's going mad around him, he'll be the one who calms everything down, puts his foot on the ball. Um, so, you know, he'll be a key player. Well, now with the Seasiders entering yet another playoff campaign, one man who has seen it all is Blackpool director Brett Geraghty. Having attended his first match in the 1970s, Brett has taken time out this week to reflect on his best moments supporting Blackpool and his views on the season so far. Thank you for the invite. Uh, my first Blackpool game was on the 17th of September 1977, which was just after my ninth birthday. Um, it was obviously a present from my mum and dad and my dad took me together with my granddad Jerry. Uh, we stood in the scratching sheds, the old east stand there. Uh, it was against Tottenham in the second division and uh, I dug out the old programme from the loft 
Uh, the great Mickey Walsh playing, Bob Hatton. Uh, for Tottenham, we've got Glenn Hoddle, Steve Perryman, uh, Peter Taylor. Sadly, we went down 2-0. But uh, that was the first experience I had at Blackpool Football Club. And you've touched on Mickey Walsh and Glenn Hoddle and the like there. Who was your favourite player to play in Tangerine over the years that you've supported them? My favourite player, it's difficult to identify one player. Um, perhaps as a theme, I would say from Uwandi Garner through to David Ayres, through to Trevor Sinclair, James Quinn. Uh, Wes Houlihan and perhaps more recently GTF all flair players ability to change a game exciting and over the time that you've watched them is there any memory that stand out in particular? I think football's all about memories and it's mm. not always the game that necessarily you remember um, a particularly special time in my life and I think for a lot of people of, uh, of my generation was the Billy Air era um, Blackpool in the 1980s had been um Unsuccessful. It was a time uh, with not much to shout about. Along came Billy Air with his shorts, his socks rolled down, fist pumping outside the uh, South Stand before the game. And he sort of understood what the club was about, what the fans were about. And we all bought into him and he bought into us. So around that era, some big games, I can remember Burnley away in 1991 on a Tuesday night, getting a lift with somebody from law school in Chester. Uh, and there were, I think, 17 or 18,000 fans there, five or 6,000 Blackpool. This was in the fourth division, but there was the passion, the feel around Blackpool at that time. Um, other memories that I, I would probably talk about, you know, the, the, the away days with the lads from Poulton on Bank Holiday Mondays to Rotherham and the Wembley trips. Uh, not necessarily some of the great games, but great occasions. Uh, and I think particularly personal to me would have been my son's first game when he was uh, just between two and three uh, I brought him to an FA Cup first round game uh, not many of us here uh, it wasn't a great game but I can remember he got his first scarf had his hot dogs three trips to the toilets cheered every everybody who kicked the ball both sides but he loved it and it was you know put it in his blood and since that time he's been a, a huge fan he's at university and he still follows every Blackpool game and I follow where he can and he's here when he's home. So it's, uh, you know, those are the memories that are special to me. And bringing it forward to, to the present day, obviously in the playoffs this season, how yeah. impressed have you been overall with the campaign this season? Yeah, it's been fantastic. I think, look, it's been an up and down season. There's been highs and there's been lows. Um, we brought, I think it was 17 players in last summer. Uh, some players left. There was always going to be a period of transition. We have uh, a new manager um, and it would take time to settle. And I think those first nine games, um, some of them we could have taken points from. Uh, and from day one, I, I believed in what Neil Critchley would achieve. Uh, and even though Jerry wasn't scoring at that time, I, I always backed him to come good. And he's done more than that. But over the season, our away form has just been phenomenal. I mean, performances at Lincoln at, uh, for, well, for 70 minutes. At Peterborough, where we, where we were superb. They scored and equalised last minute and we went up the other end and showed real character to win that game. Uh, Portsmouth away, uh, Charlton away, that was a fantastic performance. So, yeah, I'm delighted with how the season's gone and I think we've got some real fans' favourites in this team. I really do. And lastly, I know you're a big fan of, of Jerry Yates. I am uh, he, of he's Jerry. the first striker at Blackpool to score 20 league goals since Andy Watson in yeah. 1994. Yeah. How important do you think he is to the team? Massive. I think that my first... Uh, sighting of Jerry was at Southport in a friendly away last season and uh, I was hugely impressed with him. I remember talking to you know friends, family, anybody who listened really about how we've got this new striker and the intensity of his play and just how much effort, how the work off the ball, how unselfish he is. He's had a phenomenal season. Uh, I backed Jerry from day one. Um, he deserves his 20 goals. For me, I think what encapsulates him is that goal away at Portsmouth where he wins the ball up the halfway line and his determination to drive on and, and then put the ball in the net. He is a classic Neil Critchley player. He's all about the, the, the passion, the drive, 100%. Uh, fabulous player. It just comes across, doesn't it, that you know the team's doing well, the club seems to be just in so much a better place as well. And even though he's you know, part of the director and part of the, sort of the infrastructure to have this club, just being a fan, it just comes across. 
Yeah, <laughs> it's great to see to see that passion and, and someone inside the club who's got the same feelings as those on the on the terraces. I think that's that's important at football clubs to to almost have that person who understands what the fans thinks and you can see you know can see by the passion that he's got there that you know the the fans can feel that they've got a voice. And, and what's good as well I think he's certainly a mutual respect isn't it between the fans of what we've seen you know this last week about going into the playoffs the team and just everyone's on board from you know right at the top to to the fans it's just it's just a fantastic feeling and, and one that you'll certainly know being around football clubs when you get into playoff football. Yeah, it's great when you've got that connection, you know, and everybody's pulling in the same direction. Here is the same, you know, everybody's together, everybody's pulling in the di same direction. And with that, you can go a long, long way. And we've seen it, you know, we've seen it with, with clubs going, you know, right the way through to the Premier League. So, you know, fingers crossed, you know, get this, uh, get this playoffs out of the way and get, and get promoted, but there's a lot to work to do. Well, Andy, thank you very much for joining us once again today. Don't forget, both legs against Oxford will be broadcast live on Sky Sports with the first leg at the Kassam Stadium. That kicks off on Tuesday at 6pm and the second leg here at Bloomfield Road on Friday night at 7.45. Well, thanks again for watching. The very best of luck to Neil Critchley and his squad in the playoff semi-finals.